Hey guys, in this video we're just going to jump right into the code because this is like my fourth time trying this video and every time I try, I screw something up. It's kind of the story of my life. <laughs> so the goal of this video is to talk about two things. This default value when you visit the page for the first time and the logout capability. Right now we have the logged in set to true by default which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, if you visited the page for the very first time, it's gonna tell you to log out. That's a little strange, but the opposite doesn't really make a whole lot of sense either because if we set this to false and you know, you literally just log in, right? And then you visit this page in another tab, it shows you the protected route, but tells you to log in. Oh, that's not what we want either. So it really seems neither of those work. So really, true is better, I think, because worst case scenario just sends you to a login page, but neither is ideal. And the better solution is to check local storage for an access token. This will at least give us a little bit more accurate results. The only consequence is it may be expired. So the long-term goal is to use refresh token, and if it works, stay logged in, otherwise send to login page. So that way they have a more specific destination or goal, which is either they're logged in or they're not. Whereas what we're doing now is just kind of assuming one or the other. So what we'll do in this first video is this top one here. This will be pretty similar to the logging out, which will just remove everything from local storage. The refresh token is going to take some building out, so we'll do that probably in the next episode. So this is what it's going to look like. We will ask if they have local, oh, I need to calm down. All right, local storage dot access. If they have that value, then we'll say true. Otherwise, we'll say false. So let's just go through this example. So let's go ahead and visit this page for the first time. It checked our local storage, realized we had a value, and it says log out. Similarly, if we log out, well, which we haven't built that behavior yet, gosh. So to simulate that, we'll just go into the terminal and say local storage dot clear, and that will remove the access token. Now, if we visit local host, but instead of customers, we access an open page such as the employees page. This is fine, and it tells us to log in because we don't have the access token. So it's at least a little bit of a better behavior than what we had earlier. The only possible downside is if we have an access token that is expired. So you can simulate this by going into login and setting the access token to a specific value such as five. So this is not a valid access token. So you can imagine we had the original access token and it just expired enough time has gone by, which you can configure that in your back end. But now we no longer have a, a legit access token, but we have something. And in that situation, when we visit the site on an open page, it's going to tell us to log out and it'll continue to say log out until we access a protected route. So not the worst user experience ever. Only real downside is if you end up taking a break from this site and you come back a long time later, it might just say you're logged in. And then as soon as you click a protected route, it's going to ask you to log in, even though it just said you were logged in. So not the best user experience, but better than what we had. And that's where we're going to stop with the default in this episode. So we have implemented this behavior. Now, what I want to do is I basically want to clear local storage whenever we log out. So let's go ahead and build a logout button. Right now we have this nav link and you can conditionally define an on click on here. So you could say on click and this could be set to a ternary and this would check to see if logged in has a value and if it does, you could execute some function and otherwise say null. So that's one way you can do it. And then you might need to change these conditionals throughout. So that's a little bit more complex. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely render a different nav link. So many spaces there, depending on whether logged in exists. So it's going to look like this logged in. And if so, we will render this nav link. Otherwise, we will render a different nav link, which is going to be pretty similar. So I'm just going to copy this one here. So copy, paste, and this way we can avoid a bunch of ternaries and 
it might just be easier to read. So in this situation, if logged in is true, we only need to worry about it saying log out. So we can get rid of the ternary and simplify this code a bit. Classes will stay the same, and all we have to do is have this say log out. Don't know what that's from. Sometimes that appears, I don't know. I think it's part of the prettier extension doing something strange, but we'll remove that. Now the other option is they're logged out. In that case, we only need to display login so we can get rid of everything else. And same thing down here. And we don't need those quotes, sorry. So right now, both of the buttons are being displayed. The fix for this is just to surround your ternary inside of curly braces, so it'll look like that. And now let's try this out. So we log in, hit log in, it changes to log out. Now if we reset our local storage and access a protected route, it tells us to log in. So it's working, but now we can easily go in here and add a custom on click for the logout. So we will go up here, we'll say on click, and we will define a function in here. First thing I'll do is I'll just console log logging out just so that we can confirm that we're hitting this. So we hit log in, takes us to a page, and we hit log out. It says logging out. We don't necessarily need to navigate to a new page so we can change this to a pound sign. Alternatively, you can navigate to the login page after you log out. So all we need to do now is to say set logged in to false and I want local storage to be cleared. So local storage dot clear. All right, let's check it out, see how this works. So we'll visit some page, we hit log out, it says logging out and it changes to login. But the actual page we're on doesn't change, so I think it would be more appropriate to redirect to the slash login page. So now, let's first log in. It'll take us back to customers. We hit log out, it takes us to log in, and it changes us to log in. And now if we open a new page, it should still say log in because we also cleared the local storage. At this point, I'm pretty confident in this function. I'm going to remove this console log. So we've definitely improved the beginning and the end of the login experience in this video. There's just one change that I wanna make and that is anytime we set the logged in state to false, we're also clearing local storage, which will just kind of keep everything in sync. And then if we access the page again, we don't have any lingering expired tokens that aren't going to work and that might mess up the user interface. And then in the next episode, we're going to take a look at that refresh token and how that works. So let's go into our code and we will figure out how we can clear the local storage whenever we set logged into false. Pretty much we are working with a function and this comes from, if you look up here, we have set logged in from use context. And if you go into the login context, you could actually peek the definition. This is just state. So we have a set logged in that is used to set it to true or false. Well, in theory, we could define a different function here that we could invoke places that will set logged into false and clear the local storage. Then instead of using set logged in directly, we can use that new function and down in our code, wherever we invoke set logged in to false, we could just invoke that other function. So let's go do that. Let's head over to app.js. In here, we will say something like function and we can give it a different name such as change logged in and then we'll take a value and basically what we're going to do is just set logged in for them passing in that value but this is going to allow us to do additional things so for example if value is equal to false meaning they're not logged in then all we really need to do is say local storage dot clear and that should remove any access or refresh tokens from local storage now, keep in mind, this is going to clear out all of local storage, so if you're using it for something else such as dark mode, you'll probably want to be more specific here and only clear out access and refresh tokens. I'm not doing anything like that, so I'm going to keep it as is. Now, instead of passing set logged in, you could pass in change logged in, and let's try this out. So we will log in, and we will get local storage to see what's in there. Let's go ahead and change the access token so we can 
have an invalid access token, setting it equal to something like five. Access another protected route, takes us back to the login, and now let's go ahead and take a look at local storage, and you can see that it is completely empty. We no longer have the access token equal to five or the refresh token, so it appears to have worked. Now you may be confused how we changed the name here, but throughout our application, we are still using set logged in. Well, the name that we pass in here is irrelevant because really what happens is when we import this, we are giving it whatever name we want and we chose to give it set logged in. So set logged in here actually refers back to this change logged in that we passed in. So it's just uh, different names, kind of how arguments and parameters for functions don't necessarily have to be the same name. So you could, if you wanted to go through and change set logged in to change logged in throughout your application, I'm totally fine with the way it is here. There's only one other thing I can think of that we need to do, and that is mobile, which I definitely need to refactor the header so that we don't have to do this crap, because right now, this login button is not referring to the same login button that we custom defined earlier in this video. So we have this ternary here, but we have this additional setup down here for mobile. You can see this nav link down here is doing the ternary stuff again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just for now copy paste and take this whole ternary, bring this down here and I'm going to paste, but I'm going to replace the classes with the mobile classes and then we can remove this old nav link. So I'm going to take that, paste it here and same thing for right here. Okay. Now we will remove this old nav link and just make sure everything looks pretty much right and is working pretty much the same and we should be good to go. In the next episode, I want to take a look at the refresh token, what that is and how it works and how we can use that in our application to keep users logged in for longer periods of time and potentially use it as a way to have a better default value for whether the user is logged in or not. So stay tuned for that video, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.